Dungeness crab. It's one of the most sought after crabs in the world. It's also a critical part of the BC economy. Today, Rob and I are taking you to Prince Rupert, British Columbia, the hub of BC's crab fishery. We'll see how this delicacy supports an entire community. I'm Robert Clark. As a chef, I have spent my entire career in the pursuit of sustainable seafood. I'm Carmen ruiz Laza. As a consumer, I've made sourcing local Canadian seafood my mission. Rob and I are going to take you on a journey. We're going to meet the men and women that bring the sea to our tables. Rob and I have traveled to Prince Rupert, BC, the Dungeness capital of Canada. Located less than 100 kilometers from the Alaskan border, Prince Rupert is Canada's northernmost Pacific port. We are going crab fishing here in Rupert because more than 50% of the crab that's harvested in British Columbia is landed here in Rupert. There are two fleets of crab fishing boats that operate out of Prince Rupert, Area A and Area B. Area A boats ply the deeper waters of Hecate Strait between the mainland and Haida Gwaii. Area B boats are smaller and focus mainly on the inside waters. While in Prince Rupert, Rob and I are going to go out crabbing with Area B fisherman Long Cow. All right, let's do it. Afterwards, Rob is going to create an ultimate crab meal with local Japanese chef Dai Fukusaku. But no one's going to believe we're in Prince Rupert. It's not raining. It's not raining. <laughs> Before meeting Lung and Chef Dai, we needed to see one of these massive Area A boats up close. So we headed down to the docks to meet Captain Dean of the Nanrus. That is a massive vessel. I hear that the Nanrus is one of the biggest crab fishing boats on the BC coastline. I mean, look at the size of this thing. What a vessel, wow. She's a beauty. Oh gosh. Oh, look at that, a nice ladder for you. There's a nice ladder for you guys to go on. Okay, you wanna go first? Uh, no, ladies first. <laughs> okay. You tell me how cold the water is. <laughs> Help me! 60% of all BC crab is caught by Area A boats. But they're out to sea for so long that the only way Rob and I can get on board is at the dock. It's one thing to know it's a big vessel, but it's for another one to be on it. This is huge. Yeah, it kind of has to be big, so we'll fit 500 crab traps on this boat at once. It kind of looks like a mountain. We are a single pot fishery, so we have a buoy and a line on every trap. So we'll set like a string, maybe a string of 60 here, 10 minutes away, a string of 40, half hour away, a string of 100. And what's areas. the average depth of where you set your trap? It, it varies from 35 fathoms to maybe like two fathoms. So dungeon ass crab like soft bottom, be it sand or mud. Okay. Yeah, if you're sitting on rocks, you're not really gonna catch too much. And are the crab kept in water or are they yep, kept dry we, or how does that all work? They're kept in water and we have our pumps constantly sucking in new water and pushing the old water out through the overflow. They will live and stay healthy in the hold for over a month. Dean's boat is empty now because the Nanras is about to head back out fishing. But Area B fisherman Lung has invited us to his house to try his wife Yao's fresh crab dish. This is my beautiful wife, Yao. Indeed she is. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Carmen. Nice to meet you, Robert. Robert. Lung's father moved to Prince Rupert over 30 years ago to fish. His boys followed in his footsteps. How has it changed between your father's time and your time? My father's time, we didn't have that, he didn't have, he did have experience, but the way he was doing it, it was such hard labor and Tense hours, it was constant. Like we used to haul like maybe like 90 traps and take from morning to night. So in area B, how many crab licenses or boats are there? There's 22. Only 22? Each boat has Each one boat. license. Each boat has wow. one license. So you really, that is a small community. You really know each other. Just say if a new area opens up, yeah. there'll be 22 boats in that one area <laughs> together. <laughs> and we'll just be parked right beside each other. and. Like spot prawns and other trap fisheries, crabbing can be incredibly dangerous. This is something Lung knows only too well. A few years back, 
I, I had one crew member go overboard. Oh, and lucky he was still stuck on on the line. We pulled him up, and he's he's not breathing. He's in the water for like at least five, five, seven minutes. Is the water really cold out here? Off oh the yeah, in, in a like minute you get hypothermia. Oh, oh. and uh, we, me, and my old deckhand, uh, we brought him up. Did CPR for like about well, 15, 20 minutes until he, we, he started breathing again. Oh, I couldn't sleep for like six months to a year just going through that drama. It was, it, it was something that yeah. you'd never forget. Yeah, no, I can, I can only imagine. Yeah, it, it, was, it was scary. And it just happens in a split second. Crab fishing is like our sweat, you know, our heart. You know, if we put up everything just to catch these. It's not easy catching crab. It's you gotta have experience. You gotta know where you're going and what you're doing. But the, the guy that's been with you for eight years, you know each other, you know what, everybody knows what they need to do. Right? Yeah, so he's it's the new, safer. he's the deck boss, so he, could, awesome. he does, takes care of everything in the back. I just drive the boat, yeah. find a place to set the gear and find the product. Yeah. So how does your wife feel, your family feel, every time you step out the door to go fishing? My wife always tells me just be safe and come home. Oh, we have babies oh out. My God, oh my God, Hi. Oh, Hello, Lincoln. Oh my Hi, baby. God. This is a beautiful baby. Oh. Rob and I are in Prince Rupert for Dungeness Crab. We were invited to the home of fisherman Lang Kao. His wife Yao is cooking up her crab specialty. It smells really good. Really good. So what she had in here is just some uh, ginger, some pepper, and a bit of salt, and that's pretty much it, and some cream. This is what we call fusion. Right? Italian, yeah. Vietnamese. So it's mixed. Uh, so what we do is we just grab a little bit of noodles, put okay. it on a plate. Can I serve you? Yeah. Right. Well, it's very tasty. Oh my god, this is so good. I'm so glad there's only the four of us to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I better tuck in and call it a night, because tomorrow we have to get up early to catch some crab. Morning! Good morning! And it's early. Ah, it's really early. So I guess permission to come aboard, sir? Come aboard. Okay, help, help me out head. because I don't want to go in the drink. Lung's crew uses herring to bake the crabs. They were nice enough to let me help them set the traps. So I was looking at the traps the bait trap. This is what a bait trap, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So then it's, uh, you take a bucket. Yeah. You said one quarter. One quarter. Yeah. And then we just put the lid on and then these go into the traps. Yeah. And the crabs apparently love this. The baited traps are ready to go. Lung is ready to start pulling yesterday's set. To keep the fishery viable for future years, Lung's crew are throwing back many of the crabs they pull up. They're looking for three key things, the size, the sex, and the hardness of the shell. All females are returned to the sea, as are undersized crabs or ones with shells that are too soft. If the shell is too soft, it goes back. Yeah, it can go back. Can you be faster? <laughs> I'm not your husband. You're just. <laughs> might I don't lose think a glove. I'm gonna give you a job. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. For every single crab that comes on board, we have to measure. And if it's good, then we keep. If not, then. She... So you touch it here. So this is big so, enough, right? So this one here. Yeah. Let's see. Double check. It's oversized. So it's, yeah, it's yeah, good so to you, keep. Yeah, it's good to keep. Good and to this keep. one just goes inside. Yeah, yeah he's not. <laughs> you're, now he doesn't trust you. Rob, you're not. <laughs> 
no, I trust him. No, I wouldn't. Oh, that's a huge one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Nice big one. Oh, oh my god. What? <laughs> I just threw $112 <laughs> off board. I'm done. Rob and I are in Prince Rupert. We've joined Fisherman Lung Cao aboard his Area B crab boat. Are the crab all over the bottom here? Yeah, pretty much everywhere. But uh, it really, it varies. Every year is different. They move a lot. So a crab could roughly move like six miles a day. If really? you wanted to, yes. Mm. Well, we got a couple it's more like traps? Uh, we got two more lines, and then uh, we're gonna do the sampling for the DFO. It's 30 traps, and they're gonna sample size, grade, hardness, and how, how many numbers there are. Today, Lung is taking part in a test fishery. Inspectors will meet his boat and check everything that was hauled up in the final string. Each year, the crab fishermen charter an independent science observer to do a stock assessment so the DFO can collect data on the health of the fishery. So EcoTrust is a charity that works with like rural and indigenous communities. So we are a neutral third, independent third party. The Dungeness Crab Fleet was the first fishery in BC to implement video monitoring. What I do mainly is I'll review the data that's collected on the boats. There's cameras and systems on the boats and I'll review the data that comes in. This is our electronic monitoring system. It's a, we've got a camera that shows the back deck. Each pot also has an RFID chip that is scanned when the pot is brought on board. So they'll grab the buoy, they'll scan it, and when they scan that buoy, the RFID will, will log into the computer and then it'll show us our trap count. The importance of the RFID chip and the video is the RFID chip uh, has the number and GPS location like attached to it, but then the video confirms that what the system says is happening is actually happening. In Area A, Ecotrust members join the crew for the entire length of their trip. Each skipper will have like their own trip plan. And basically what happens is we're along for the ride. And we will sleep on the boat, stay on the boat for that whole entire trip, however long that may be. And when they get up in the morning, um, we get ready with them. And when they're hauling their gear, we're biosampling off to the side. What are they looking for? Well, they're recording everything to help the Department of Fisheries Oceans get a better picture of what's going on down there. It's a lot of females. Department of Fisheries sets out the regulations per fishery and then it's up to that fishery to hire an observer certified company to match and like meet those requirements. Okay, long. See you later. All right. You guys uh, enjoy the day. Back we came to catch crab. We have the crab. The next thing is dinner. Just dinner. So what's, what's in store for dinner? Well, we have to con first convince Captain Lung to take us back to shore with this wonderful crab. Well, all I can tell you is yours is very active and mine is very docile, which I'm very grateful for. The way you're holding it, you're probably more gentle. Yeah, I just wanted to stay sleeping. Yeah, mine's wow. pissed off. Unbelievable. But, uh... Brought to you in part by Ocean Regenerative Aquaculture and CKR Seaweed. Your nation's table is brought to you in part by Cedar Creek Estate Winery. Rob and I are in Prince Rupert. We're hosting a dinner for crab fishermen with local Japanese chef, Dai Fukasaku. The thing is, I'm connected to lots of local fishermen, so I can buy direct from the fishermen. Well, you're very lucky. I am lucky. Dedicated to using only the freshest local fish, he opened his namesake restaurant with one idea, catering to the fishermen who are catching the fish he prepares. Nobody had any restaurant featuring only local seafood. 
because I buy direct or from the fishermen or direct from the plant, I'm contributed to local economy and support local fishermen. Oh, those are big ones. Thanks, Dean. Well no problem. Enjoy. Yeah. See ya, guys. Yeah, have a good one. Dai and I have decided to put together the ultimate crab meal for his crab fisherman. Oh, excellent. Hey, hey welcome. Hello. Nice welcome. to see you. Nice to see you. Full house. Welcome. <laughs> ah, they're finally here. <laughs> no. I've been wanting to come up to see Dai for a long time, and so we use this show as an excuse. Yeah. And now we're here. Yeah. Earlier in the day, as we were preparing for our guests, Chef Dai and his assistant Victoria were kind enough to show me how to shuck a crab. So you brought reinforcements for this part. Yeah. This is my Victoria, my server, my crab shucker, my prep lady, <laughs> my right hand and left hand. Oh, that's <laughs> really good. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happens now? First, we dissect them into parts. And then we're gonna remove the gel inside the body. And after that, we're gonna dissect the lead part into sections. Okay, let's try. But I wanna follow you. Okay, so just grab the legs and twist. You can just pull them right off. You don't have to twist. Easier said than done. You need some muscle for this. <laughs> so I know I'm doing one at a time and you're doing like a whole side, basically. <laughs> Okay, slow down, Sorry. you're so fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm stuck. So then I put here. Oh, where do I? Oh, I see. Oh yeah, it kind of, uns oh, I see. Oh yeah. I mean, as a home cook, you're not going for speed, you just want to be accurate. Yeah. To take all the things you don't want to eat out. Yeah. And so this goes here. Okay. So then the edible parts are oh, this and this, yeah. because that's the body, that's the meat inside. And then the claws. Okay, the work is not done yet. Let's see what we do. Show me before I mess it up. Okay. Victoria, so I have this. Slide it right through the top here and just go all the way around the shell. So go through the top yeah. like that. Yeah, and just try and scoop all the way around. Wow, that's a lot in there. Yeah, it's like a lot. You don't think so, but there's a lot. Yeah. It makes a difference having the right tools. Mm -hmm. And then let's see how, you, I want to see how you do th th those. And using this tool, I'll just pierce the shell. Ah, those involve tools. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it should come out as one. Oh, wow, look at that. Cool. Okay, so I get, I get it now, so I'm gonna just keep going. What's for dinner, chefs? We are having the ultimate crab dinner. Dai, what are we having? So, first course will be simple crab shack, crab samplers. And then we're gonna move on to Japanese style sunomono. And then we're gonna move on to crab cake salad. And then I'm gonna make a rupert rainbow roll. And we're gonna finish up with noodle dish. Please enjoy. <laughs> this is gonna go great with the Cedar Creek. And yes, let's applaud Dai. <laughs> Dai is going to do what he does best. Sushi, crab cakes, ramen. This is called the Prince Rupert platter. Actually, I have no idea what it's called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just made this up. But there we go, thank you. Thank you. Oh, the Rupert Rainbow, there we go. Just kind of like the Chelsea 88. When I first started my business, first thing I decided was, we don't have California roll in our restaurant. Because we are in DC, and we have done this crab. Team Fish, sorry to interrupt. So what we have here is uh, crab sunomono, Dai's own homemade ponzu uh, dressing. We got crab, both the body meat and the leg, some salted cucumber, and some wakame seaweed on the bottom. Enjoy. How's everyone enjoying dinner? Fantastic. A, a crab extravaganza like yeah. never before. Yeah. So I didn't tell you what my dish is. Maybe now's a good time, so you can put it on the menu. Okay. Uh, I've made some uh, pasta, yeah. and I've used, it's a seaweed pasta, so I've used some uh, macro kelp right. uh, that's uh, produced in Banfield by, uh, well, we get it through uh, Oceans Regenerative. I need to introduce you to that company. You can see that it's full of all this wonderful liquid, and it has nothing but flavor. I'm going to reduce this down by uh, 
two thirds. You know, I'm just going to puree puree it up and strain it, and it's just it's the essence of the crab. I have a big crush on fishermen. I really do this. So do I. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, for the same so, reasons, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, for the same reasons. No, it's just what our food producers, what you do is so important, and I don't, as a chef, I recognize that. I built my career on it. I built my career on buying local, sustainable, seasonal, reliable, tasty, healthy, local BC products. A lot of our problems can actually just, they'll go away if we just support local. So your lifetime of passion on sustainable seafood specifically, my lifetime of passion on farm to table, sea to table, organic, sustainable wines, all of it. It was like the perfect union. We're running off now. <laughs> Who wants no. to come? You guys, you guys thank, so thank you. you. Thank you for being part of our journey. Yeah, and, and there's uh, yeah. here's to the fabulous meal. Many more yeah. years. And, and thank you for hosting us. Yeah.